eat today? Just let me see if I'm live. Yep. Um, I hope you all are doing wonderful today. I know I am, and it's and it's great to be on with you every week and share what God has put in my heart this week. Um, every week, and I'm about to share what God has put on my heart um, for you guys this week. This sermon is titled <laughs> "The Magnificence of You." Let's pray. Father, I praise you and adore you and honor you because you are God and you are just amazing. And I want to thank you for all your dear people, your dear sons and your dear daughters. And I, I personally want to thank you for the privilege of uh, serving them in this unique way. And I want to actually um, thank you for the platform and the means to be able to do this. So, Lord, today, just speak in a way that you've never spoken through me before. Touch lives, touch minds, touch hearts, touch souls, touch spirits. Touch spirits, God. I pray that you will just go into the very marrow of our bones and just do what only you can do. Heal, restore, deliver in such a wonderful way, Lord God. That let let us never be the same because of being touched by you. Speak to me, speak through me in the name of Jesus. Amen. Um, I was in my bed, um, I, I think it was about when, no, Tuesday night, and the Lord, uh, the Lord really impressed on me this title, um, not, I don't think it was Tuesday night, I think it was Tuesday morning. I had woken up from sleep, and he uh, impressed on me this title, The Magnificence of You. And I was like, okay, do you want me to this to be another self-confidence message? And you can do whatever God has called you to be. He's like, sort of. Um, but a lot. He said, um, a lot of believers, um, confuse, um, holy confidence with unholy confidence. And, um, so that's what I'm going to talk to you today about, um, Confidence is a very tricky thing because your understanding of of confidence will shape your whole life. Um, because a lot of people uh, think that confidence is just something you automatically have. Um, you either have it or don't. But I tend to believe confidence can be learned. Um, you can you can learn to be confident. You, you can learn to to have an attitude of assurance and confidence. And what the what the Lord uh, impressed on me is we need holy confidence, holy confidence, and unholy confidence. Um, and confidence in itself is a good, is a really good thing, but it's 
all about where it's being directed that is the problem. So, um, let's first talk about unholy confidence. Unholy confidence is all about you. It's all you-centered, and it's all pointed to what you can do or what you've achieved or in a very boastful way. So, unholy confidence is not for the benefit of others or for the positive benefit of yourself. But it's for the negative benefit of yourself and the, the, the putting down of others. So people that are un, un, confident in an unholy way often uh, uh, seem to think higher of themselves or seem to think that they're all of that in a bag of chips and and seem to put down others but really underneath they are seeking uh, the same things we are they are seeking validation they are seeking love they are seeking respect but they're but they're going about it in an unhealthy way that directs people to them instead of um, directing people through them. And I'll talk more about it, like more about the difference between uh, to and through later when I talk about um, holy competence. Holy competence. But when you um, are unholy confident, you're, it's all about your image. It's all about how good you look to others for the um, lifting up of yourself, not for the lifting up of you. So all those um, pictures that you see of women with their breasts out and all those like inappropriate um, pictures that you see of uh, women that are naked and, or men with lots of muscles and they seem to have lots of confidence. That's unholy confidence. That's not real confidence because Confidence is all about where it's directed, and unholy confidence is a confidence that is directed at you and only you. It, it, it seems to lift you up and put others down, but really, unholy confidence is... Um, is not lifting you up, it's making you look, um, can I say foolish? Um, because everybody can see, you think that nobody can see that that's all phony and fake and you're just trying too hard, but usually somebody around you, most likely everybody, can see that your confidence is fake. Unholy confidence is usually boastful. You have a lot of vibrato. You have uh, a lot of ladies following you, following you because you're you're cute or what you're hot or whatever. Or you have a lot of men following you because you're fine. And that makes you feel confident, 
But when you go home at night, you just feel like a pile of garbage because what you're pointing your confidence towards, it's fleeting. James would say, we are like a vapor here today and gone tomorrow. And when you um, use your confidence to point all about me, like the world wrap, uh, revolves around me, it, it almost leaves you with a feeling of emptiness. So the thing you're trying to avoid with and making it making people think you're not, you're actually, um, you actually are making th people think that you are. So you're actually portraying the opposite image, image that, that you want to portray. And hope, and unholy confidence is very destructive because it will cause you uh, to do things uh, to keep people thinking that you're confident. You will do anything for likes. You will do anything for loves. You will do anything for cares. You will do anything for attention. And that's what the world is starving for, to like starving from like just a superficial view of being confident. Like for them, for majority of the world, confidence is an outward thing. We say it's inside, but. Really, I think what most of us um, put, portray is outer confidence. And in, internally, we feel like we're garbage. We feel like we're nothing. And the Lord wants your what you portray on the outside to first be in your inside. Because what is inside of you comes out. And what is outside of you sometimes washes off. So all that makeup, all that false confidence that you that you try and portray, it's not, not real and but God's saying there's hope and he's going to provide a re rescue and he's going to, if you let him go down into the deep rest recesses of your spiritual heart and clean you out. And he wants to do that today. And he wants to give you holy confidence. Now, holy confidence is confidence that comes through you to God. So unholy confidence comes from you to you. And unholy confidence. Now, whole, no, unholy confidence comes from you to you. And holy confidence comes through you to God. So when your confidence comes from you to God, it it doesn't have to be um, boastful. It doesn't have to be vain. It, it's an assurance that you know who you are, you know who you are, and no one can can take away from that. No one can tell you what is what. No one can tell you what is right. Uh, no one can tell you things that are not true about you because you've 
because you um, have an understanding of who you really are. Because your confidence comes from the Lord. Your confidence that he loves you regardless of uh, regardless of your hair color, regardless of your skin color, regardless of w whether you're black, whether you're white, whether um, whatever you are. And when you have the holy confidence and the assurance that God loves you and he made you with all your quirkiness, with all with everything you are, you walk differently. You don't have to walk in a vain way. You don't have to put people down. In fact, a wholly confident person lifts people up, um, lifts lifts other others up. A wholly confident person, when you when they walk into the room, there's a different feel a different walk a different step when they talk to you when they talk to you you feel so refreshed you feel like you would do anything their encouragement is just like so bolstering because their their confidence is quiet it's not a boastful it's not boastful it's not all about them it's about showing it's about knowing who they are, but showing the Lord to the world. And holy, confident people are just awesome to be around. They encourage you, um, but when you you're talking negative, they they bolster you and say, "In love, they say, honey, um, why don't you?" Um, well, why don't you think like this, or, um, you know, they, they bolster your attitude, attitude, just being around them, and you just want to be around them all the time, because they're so positive, and when you, when you tell them good news, they're happy for you, um, they don't try and pull you down, because they know who they are. And their confidence comes through them and to God. Conf holy confidence doesn't come from them. It comes through them. See, they are a conduit for confidence, not the source of confidence. Because what because we are imperfect, we cannot be the source of true confidence. Only God can be the source of true confidence. And we can be a conduit for that confidence. Like that confidence can come through us, but not from us. Uh, I was watching an interview with Carol Bayer Sager. She's a songwriter. Um, she wrote The Prayer and a couple other songs. She wrote many other songs, actually. Um, and when Oprah asked her about songwriting, she's like, the song doesn't come from me, it comes through me. And that's the thing about confidence. It doesn't come from you. It comes through you. So when you think that something comes, that confidence comes from you, it's all about you, it revolves around you. But when you understand that confidence comes through you and goes to God, it lifts not only you up, but it lifts other people up as well. And you have a a light shining around you that you don't even know, but people see it. People see it. You have a way that you are with people. You have a way that you are, are with in your life. 
when you walk into a room, there's a certain air about you. There's a certain positivity about you. There's a certain light of God that shines from you. And that's what happens when you're when you're a wholly confident person. You don't have to try and be confident. You just are, because that's how you are, and you and you lift other people up because they want to come with. Not because you're trying to get them, but they want to come with you because that energy, that spirit in you is so contagious that they just want to ride with you and and um, they just want to ride with you and be around you. And I want to talk for a second though about confidence killers. Sometimes when you're a holy confident person and people see that they most people want to want to absorb it and come with you but some people want to kill you by by their by you by their words to you um and they want to stop your growth and they want you to become not not only unholy confident where where it turns in on yourself they want you to have no confidence at all and sometimes when when un when people see your confidence your holy confidence they want to turn it inward they want to turn it on you where they want you to have no confidence at all because they're jealous of your confidence and the the Lord says don't let anyone take your holy confidence away never forget who you are and whose you are and who your your creator God has made you to be never let anyone tell you uh, who you should be, who you are. Let him tell you who you are and who you should be. Because your confidence doesn't come from you. It comes through you and from the Lord. And I want to pray before I go. I want to pray uh, before I go about... Um, about your confidence that he will increase uh, your confidence today. Um, Father, I praise you for what you're going to do and I praise you for who you are, God. Lift up our confidence. Let us know, Lord Jesus, that our confidence doesn't come from us. It comes from who you made us to be and who we are in you, Father. I praise you. I lift you up, God. You are awesome, God. Give us the strength to know our own magnificence and our own worth, God. Our worth doesn't come from the left or from the right, Lord. It comes from you. And I praise you and I worship you and I give you praise. I give you honor, Lord God. Lift up our heads. We were broken, Lord Jesus. Deliver us, free us, restore us. Lord Jesus, go into the very marrow of our bones and do what only you can do. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Um, it was it was sort of funny when I got this sermon, you guys, as I close. 
um, uh, the Lord started to speak to me about what he saw in me. He said, he, he said, you preach consistently even before the pandemic, but you ra ramped it up since the pandemic. Even with all your physical challenges, you've been there every week just preaching and teaching my word. And even before the pandemic, you did it consistently for 10 years. You didn't have a consistent schedule for a while, but you still did it, did it every so often for 10 years and you've never quit you've done it with a busted chair you've done it with your handles falling off you you preached when you could barely see the screen you you've done it he's like and i'm so proud of you he said embrace your magnificence and he said embrace Rachel, the magnificence that I put in you, the magnificence that you have as a person. Don't shy away from it. Embrace it. And I, it just flooded my soul with such peace to know that my father thinks I'm magnificent. And I, and I want to tell you the same thing. You've been really consistent with what he's called you to do with raising those children with ev with everything you've had to face in these past two years and before you've just been coming back and coming back and you've never quit and he wants to say embrace your own magnificence and for people who have quit he said, there is grace. Come back. There is grace. Although you have quit, although you haven't been consistent, although you've fallen, he understands. And there is grace for mistakes. And there is grace for inconsistency. He says, he just wants you back. There's no need to hide there's no need to fear. There's no need to fret. There's no need to compete with this person and that person. All, all he wants you to do is come back. He desperately wants you to come back to him. Come back to himself. Come back to the kingdom. Um, and he's saying you can be in church but not be in him a lot of people are in church but not in god the church building is only a building with brick and mortar but what god wants is for you to be in him and he's wanting you to come back today and that is as easy as um, believing and confessing. He said, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, he is faithful and just to forgive you. And he, his, he, he's saying his, his forgiveness is ready and available today. All you have to do is ask. And he's saying, just ask me in your own words. Just ask me in your own way. If, if after you ask, you need help about other directions where to go, contact me. I'm available. You can message me or leave a comment on this video I'd be happy to help you um, a lot of pastors do what they call a sinner's prayer what you pray after them but 
I tend to believe that although he wants to hear hear me as his, one of his children, he desperately wants to hear you in your own words. He wants to hear what's in your heart, in your mind, and in your soul. So just do it now. Say, say whatever you want in your own words, in your, your, your own spirit, your own way. And he will come into your life and sh change it. And it will be better. It won't be perfect. But in the imperfections of your life, he will walk with you. He will be there for you. He will be your cheerleader. And he will love you like no man, no woman, no person, no animal will love you. And he's just waiting for you. He's waiting right now with open arms. Thanks, guys. Bye. There's room at the cross for you. There's room at the cross for you. The millions have come. There is still room for one, yes, there's room at the cross for you. There's room at the cross for you. Yes, there's room at the cross for you, the millions have come, there is still room for one, yes there's room at the cross for you. And trust me, nearer us and more to the cross where thou hast died. Trust me. Draws nearer, nearer us and Lord to the cross where thou hast died. Draws nearer, nearer. Said, Lord, to thy precious pleading side. Bye, guys. I'll see you next week.